The following tutorial is the second step of the first day implementation of Dots the game. What we're going to be doing now is adding a skeletal mesh to our pawn class so we have something to look at. We'll be adding a light component so we can actually see this something to look at. And we'll be adding collision components so we can actually not fall through the floor or run through walls, things like that. And hopefully his feet placement will be correct for us as well. So we go into our pawn class that we created in step one and we are going to create a variable a variable called dynamic light environment component and call it pawn light environment which will be used as the light that we can change later in our code if we need a reference back to it and our default properties we're going to start off by beginning we're going to make three objects a light component as mentioned before a skeletal component and a collision component so we'll start off with the begin object class equals dynamic light environment component and the name of it will be D Pawn Light Environment. You can call this whatever you want, but uh, if you do change the name, make sure you're consistent with it. And uh, B Synthesize H SH Light will equal true. We'll end the object, and then we'll add the component to the pawn with D Pawn Light Environment. Then we will go ahead and use this variable we created up above and make Pawn Light Environment equal D Pawn Light Environment which will allow us to reference it later, say if we had teams and we wanted there to be a different look or something to it, uh, to this light environment, we can change it easier than having to do a million different objects uh, and creating a million different pawns. Um, the next thing we'll do is the object will create the skeletal mesh, so we'll do a skeletal mesh component and we'll make it a D pawn skeletal mesh comp. B owner no C equals false, and the reason for this is uh, we want to actually see our, our skeletal mesh since this will be in third person uh, mode. If you were to set this to true, you would never see your character. We'll cast shadow equal true because we would like to see shadows. We'll place the light environment inside of the skeletal mesh so that he lights up. And then we will also um, go ahead and add a skeletal mesh to him and an animation set. Now the, the model you're about to see um, isn't exactly the most uh, beautiful model because I don't model or create models um, and I'm not exactly an animator so you're not going to see the greatest animations either so I just want to give you a heads up that with the skeletal mesh you're going to see a creation I created called an evil and uh, as for his animations he will pretty much be able to move his legs so we'll go ahead and put those in and we'll end the object and we'll add mesh equals D pawn skeletal mesh comp Mesh is just like uh, pawn light environment. It's something that we use later if we wanted to make changes. And uh, components dot add. We'll add the component to the skeletal mesh. Or I'm sorry. We'll add the skeletal mesh to the pawn. Then we will begin object name equals cl uh, collision cylinder, uh, collision radius, and we'll set the collision radius to 21, and we'll set the collision height to 44, and uh, we'll end object. And once again, cylinder component. It's something we can use in the code uh, will equal the collision cylinder. Once all of that is finished we can go into the UT front end and we can make it which will compile everything we have. Once it's fully compiled you should have no errors hopefully and we will go to our shortcut that we made in step one and load the game and this will take a few moments so I'll pause while it loads. Okay so now the game is loaded and if you look directly down, you can let me get rid of the. Uh, there we go. If you look directly down, you can actually see the evil, um, and he's casting a little bit of a shadow. But since uh, we have a default level of camera, we'll go ahead and com and count in uh, the console mode, excuse me, and we'll type in camera, and we'll do uh, let's do free cam. Once you do that, you should be able to see him from a distance and. It looks like his feet were a little bit in the ground, but otherwise when he walks, things look good. And as I said before, I'm not really too much worried about how he looks as much as I'm worried about showing you all how to program. So um, so this isn't really important to me. I just wanted to give you all something that you can physically see while we go about it. You can use whatever uh, model you have if you like, and um, it's, it makes no real difference to me but there's the little creation I made. He doesn't even have a material on him at all. And once all that is done, then that completes step two.